As we did for stereoisomeric relationships, we want to develop a rigorous test to determine the stereotopic relationship between a pair of groups within a given molecule. One of the tests to do this is called the substitution test, and it's akin to the fail-safe method for determining chirality and the flowchart approach to determining stereoisomeric relationships. It's foolproof. There is a somewhat quicker method in some cases that we'll discuss in the next video, but the substitution test is a foolproof way to determine stereotopic relationships. To introduce this test, let's return to some observations we made in the last video. Recall that the enantiotopic hydroxyl groups in this molecule react to form a pair of enantiomers, and that the diastereotopic hydroxyl groups in this molecule react to for form a pair of diastereomers. These results are general for enantiotopic and diastereotopic groups, in reaction with achiral reagents, they always give enantiomers and diastereomers respectively. So there's no reason to complicate our lives with complex reaction conditions like this. If all we're interested in is the spatial difference between the groups, then we can replace this acetoxy group with pretty much anything, right? We could name it X or we could name it Q, as is done in the substitution test. And regardless of what we call that sort of test group, we're going to get the same result. These are still enantiomers, and these are still diastereomers. And although it isn't shown here, it's easy to show that there are results for homotopic groups that are analogous. Homotopic groups always afford homomers, and reaction of constitutionally heterotopic groups always affords constitutional isomers. These observations are the basis of the substitution test. And the general idea is to convert from the problem of finding a stereotopic relationship between two groups within one molecule to the problem of finding the stereoisomeric relationship between two molecules. We generate the two so-called Q molecules by replacing each group of interest with Q in turn. In this hypothetical example, replacing X with Q leads to compound 1, and replacing the internally identical but possibly heterotopic group X prime with Q leads to compound 2. Notice that the idea basically is we're running a hypothetical abstract reaction on X to generate compound 1 and the same reaction on X prime to generate 2. We then determine the isomeric relationship between 1 and 2 to deduce the stereotopic relationship between X and X prime in the original molecule. If the molecules 1 and 2 are homomers, just the same molecule drawn from two different viewpoints, then groups X and X prime are homotopic. If the molecules are enantiomers, then the groups are enantiotopic. If they are diastereomers, the groups are diastereotopic. And if they are constitutional isomers, then groups X and X prime are constitutionally heterotopic. Let's see the Q test in action in a few examples. Before diving in, notice that the beauty of this test is that it reduces a seemingly complicated problem, finding a stereotopic relationship between two groups in a single molecule, to the simpler problem that we know how to do already of determining an isomeric relationship between a pair of molecules. So while generating the Q molecules is a little bit of work up front, once they've been generated, we're applying a method we already know to determine a stereotopic relationship. In the first example, imagine we're interested in the stereotopic relationship between this hydroxyl I'm boxing in red and this hydroxyl that I'm boxing in blue. Replacement of the red hydroxyl group with an achiral test group Q gives the structure shown here. We haven't touched the other hydroxyl group at all. We've simply replaced the red boxed hydroxyl with the letter Q. Replacement of the hydroxyl boxed in blue with an achiral test group Q leads to the molecules shown here. And now our task is to determine the isomeric relationship between these two molecules. The molecules do have the same connectivity, and the easiest way to see this, I think, is to flip this molecule over by 180 degrees so that the Q groups correspond. And this is a common operation in the Q test of trying to align those Q groups. When we do that, the Q and hydroxyl substituent change positions, and Q swings behind the screen, as does the hydroxyl group. From this orientation, we can see that these molecules differ in configuration at both of their stereocenters, since Q and the implied hydrogen have changed places, and the hydroxyl group and the implied hydrogen at the other stereocenter have also changed places. Because these molecules then are enantiomers, we can conclude that the hydroxyl groups in the original molecule are enantiotopic. In this example, we're interested in the relationship between the two amino groups, boxed once again in red and blue. Replacement of the red amino group with an achiral test group Q leads to the molecule shown here. 
and replacement of the blue amino group leads to the molecule shown here. Once again, these molecules have the same connectivity, and if I try to superimpose them perfectly by rotating this molecule 180 degrees around an axis like this, what I find is that Q moves into an outward pointing position exactly where the amino group is located, while the amino group moves into a position down here, indicating that these two molecules, generated by replacing the different amino groups with the test group Q, are in fact one and the same structure. They're homomeric. As a consequence, the two amino groups in the original structure are homotopic. In the case here, we're interested once again in the relationship between the two hydroxyls. Replacing the hydroxyl group boxed in red with an achiral test group leads to this structure. Replacing the hydroxyl group boxed in blue with that same group leads to the structure shown here. What's the relationship structurally or isomerically between these two molecules? Well, in the red molecule, Q is in a 1-4 relationship to the alkene substituent, as shown here. But in the blue molecule, Q is in a 1-3 relationship to the alkene substituent. These two molecules don't have the same connectivity. This means that they're constitutional isomers. And from this, we can conclude that the hydroxyls in the original molecule are constitutionally heterotopic. Finally, we have the rather visually complicated example in the top right, and this is one where applying the Q-test systematically really shows the virtue of this test for determining stereotopic relationships. Here we're interested in the relationship between the two boxed ester groups in red and blue. Here's the result of replacing the red boxed ester group with the test group Q. And here's the result of replacing the blue boxed ester group with the test group Q. Now, what's the isomeric relationship between the two molecules shown here? Well, the molecules have the same connectivity. This is easy to see on the left-hand side of the molecule, where things look exactly the same. But even on the right-hand side, where Q is involved, we find that the connectivity is the same in both structures, ignoring three-dimensional information. So they are stereoisomers. When the groups of interest are connected to a common atom, the resulting Q molecules will always be stereoisomers. What type of stereoisomers are they, enantiomers or diastereomers? While it is possible to verify that these molecules are definitely not mere images, we can also examine the configurations of the stereocenters here. This stereocenter, which is present in the original molecule, doesn't change configuration between the two Q molecules. It's got nothing to do with where Q is being added. For that reason, these configurations match in the two Q molecules. However, at the other stereocenter, where we essentially inverted configuration by replacing one or the other ester group with Q, the newly generated stereocenter as a result of that replacement has a different configuration in these two molecules. As a consequence, we can conclude that the two Q molecules are diastereomers and that the stereotopic relationship between the original ester groups is diastereotopic.